Hi everyone, welcome back to Get A Brood. So today I'm joined by Nick Breeding from Murphy & Sons. Now we have been distributing Murphy & Son products for a short while now and we're very pleased to have access to Nick's full technical support and experience. So this video today is an introduction to let you know what we can do um, for you in your brewery in relation to process aids, water treatments and to learn a little bit more about Murphy & Sons. Nick, if you would tell our customers what you guys do, if they don't already know. So, Thank you, Jonathan, and hello, everybody. Uh, yes, I'm Nick Brading, a master brewer. I've been working at Murphy's now for the best part of 15 years, and uh, we are specialists in the field of process aids for brewers, but more recently also winemaking, cider, and distilling. So our products cover all the aspects that help a brewer achieve better quality, better efficiency and more consistency. And these are really, really important now in, in, the, uh, in, in the brewing industry for brewers to achieve better quality beer. Yeah. So what, one of the things that um, we want to start telling the Irish brewing community about is the services that, that you offer and that we can assist them with. Um, so water treatments, liquor treatments are critically important at the end of the day. 90% of beer is water. so you guys are going to start offering a water testing service through ourselves for recommendations for brewers. So take us through how that process works. Yes, we manufacture a, a wide range of products for treating water. And as you say, water is 90% or more of most beers. And it's very often uh, just coming out of the tap. It's thought, well, water is water. And uh, we'll get on and look at the malt and the hops and the yeast and the other more interesting things about it, but it's fundamental to the, 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 a good brewing process and also uh, a really authentic and professional quality of final beer product. Of course, it was the uh, water in those centers of the world which made certain, certain beers really famous, like Pilsen in Czechoslovakia, like uh, the Burton waters to make the pale ales and the IPAs that uh, became huge in the, uh, in the time of the British empire in the 18th and 19th centuries and uh, stouts which were of course a big part of Ireland uh, the water in Dublin yeah. is very very well known for that and it's those particular profiles in the water that create that beer uh, it's not just the final beer but it's also the process of the brewing of that beer which enable all the enzyme processes and the various other uh, actions that take place and what Murphy's do is in our laboratories which are um, set up to test water and we look at the most important aspects of the quality that the physical and chemical characteristics of a water, the softness and hardness, the calcium, sulfate, chloride, um, and the, the, the pH of those waters. And it's these which we can determine and give brewers very, very uh, quickly and easily and cheaply uh, a, a profile of their water, whether it's mains water or whether it's groundwater from a well or a borehole and then advise them on what they need to do to uh, create the perfect water to, to match the particular style of beer they want to brew. Yeah, yeah. So in relation to um, how that works, what size of sample, how do they obtain the sample? Yes. And yeah, you yeah. Know, so, so all we need is a sample size between 30 and 50 milliliters, a very small, a little sterile bottle, uh, and you just pop it in a, in a jiffy bag, post it to our laboratory in Nottingham, and then it takes about, the turnaround time on that is between uh, five and eight days. You get a, a full recommendation of what the important brewing aspects of that sample are and a recommendation on the three core beer styles, which are the, the fathers of all other beer styles. One is bitters and IPAs. The second is lagers and pilsners. And the third is porters and stouts. From those three, and we'll recommend the treatment for your water in a, with a variety of different salts and uh, treatments which will then allow the brewer to produce those styles of beer. So one thing that's available in the market, there's water treatment, liquor treatment, whatever the terminology you want to use, they're available in a, a large number of places, but the difference, my understanding the difference with working with Murphy's is that you have the technical experience to have created blends yes. of salt <clears throat> and nutrition and amino acids and all those complex um, molecules that need to be part of that mix. So you're not 
um, send them back a report saying, you know, oh, use this widely available product user actually fine tuning those products to bespokely set yes, the brewer. Yes, very much so. Yes, we because not uh, water is uh, very complex on the face of it. it, it water, everybody thinks water is water, but in order to create certain individual individual styles for brewers, we can tweak the the blend of these treatments to suit if a brewer wants a particular type of uh, like a, a Nipa or a deeper, these beers from the States, they have quite a different water over there. To enable you to create very authentic beers in that, that particular style, we can tailor make a particular treatment for you to the batch size or to the whatever other uh, requirement in terms of packaging the brewer wants. So we can make that formulation up for them. So all they would need to do is the day before mashing would be to treat their hot liquor tank with the uh, particular yeah. Uh, package and away they would go the next day on brewing. Lovely. Look, um, we're going to do a, a series of videos today with Nick because he's here with us and um, we'll release those staggered as, as a multi-part series but the, this, the focus of this particular video is introduction to you. So tell us a little bit about your background. So you've, you've got an exceptionally interesting background. <laughs> you know. okay. Yeah, thanks Jonathan. Yeah, I, was, um, I came out of university in Edinburgh, Harriet Watt University with a brewing degree in the uh, mid 80s. I then did 14 years in the cask brewing industry, uh, initially with Shipston's Brewery in Nottingham, latterly 10 years with Ruddles Brewery in uh, Rutland in uh, East uh, Leicestershire. Uh, and then I had got interested in um, lager production. I knew all about cask beer production, very particular UK product. Uh, I'd got interested in lager production, the technicalities of it. So I'd noticed that Carlsberg were advertising for brewers to come and join them, but not just in the UK. This was over in Copenhagen, the very uh, epicenter of the Carlsberg Empire. So just got married, went across in the late 90s to Copenhagen, lived there for three years and became a Carlsberg master brewer. Yeah. And I, that job involved going around the world, the Carlsberg world, they brew in over 130 countries and was auditing the production of Carlsberg and Tuborg and other brands which were associated with the various uh, the Carlsberg enterprises and was with them for 10 years and had a wonderful time with them and learnt really how big brewing works, a lot of science, a lot of uh, very, very useful knowledge and experience I gained with them and found myself back in the north of England running the Carlsberg Tetley Brewery in Leeds. Um, and then, of course, uh, with the way the dynamics of the industry, the way the corporate world works, uh, it became so that Leeds was no longer required as a part of the Carlsberg Empire. So sadly, that had to go, and that was also my the end of, for me in Carlsberg. So I worked for myself for a couple of years as a consultant brewer, yeah. and then I joined Murphy and Son, a little company based in Nottingham in England, who I noticed were um, quite small and gave me the opportunity to get back to the coal face of small breweries. Yeah. Uh, they produced a wide range of processing aids, and they were looking for. Uh, to, to expand uh, that in the UK, but also internationally. And, and with the international experience I had gained with Carlsberg, it was a pretty good fit. So I spent the next uh, five, eight years or so traveling the world, going visiting uh, my old countries that I'd used to live in, working where I had a lot of brewing contacts, building up the Murphy range of products in those countries. And uh, now we've got quite a nice export business we've diversified quite nicely into Europe and into the States in particular where of course you will know there is an enormous interest in uh, uh, in, in craft brewing so we've done very well there and uh, now we're, I'm sort of focused back on the UK and uh, looking very much to to work with uh, you guys here in, in Northern Ireland and, yeah. uh, and, and also possibly in the South too. <laughs> We've covered, um, you know, the water treatment, what you do and a little bit of background knowledge on yourself. It would be nice to know a little bit more about other products, rather that we're not going to go into the detail of those, but to give our brewers that are watching an overview. So we have finings. Yes. Um, so that's kettle and Kettle, tank. what we call hot side finings and cold side finings. The kettle finings are basically carrageenan, which are used for protein clarification, a little bit of trub collection and compaction in the brew house, but more importantly, to achieve a good cold break in uh, wort at the start of fermentation. And then a range of cold side findings, which are designed to precipitate protein material, which would otherwise cause a problem with flavor or stability or um, 
in the final product if you're producing bright beer and also clarification agents uh, like icing glass for yeast clarification and also now a an inorganic cl yeast clarification agent uh, called Super F which is becoming very popular as uh, some people are moving away from, from icing glass. But they're, they're all so it's a vegan friendly it's option. It's a vegan friendly yeah. option, that's right. It, we developed it as a tank finding option for the United States actually because they like to find their beer over there even though they do have some quite hazy beers they still like to find um, a, a lot of yeast out of the tank they don't want too much yeast in the final product so uh, they didn't but they didn't want to use icing glass they preferred a, a silica based finding agent which is what this is so we developed that for that market and then now of course it's finding a lot of traction in the craft brewing industry in the UK. So you have uh, the benefit of both worlds there. You're used to your experience, Carlsberg, and you're also used to dealing with the large breweries, um, you know, Tenants being one of your largest customers. So you, you can draw on the corporate brewing world experience, but you're using that knowledge to help the craft Very much brewing. So. <coughs> and, and genuinely mean that they're using that to help in, in a positive way because um, the one thing I'll, I'll say is not all of our brewers can afford centrifuges and filters and you know cross flow filters whatever we were talking with these earlier but you have solutions for them to prevent them having to invest in that equipment at this stage and that's what yes it. yes it's the, it's the use of brewing science and knowledge to apply the principles in a way to a smaller brewing operation so that they can achieve the same levels of professional standards in their final product and also at a really reasonable price, giving them uh, good options for uh, able to deliver to their customers really, really high quality beer. So it can advance both their products and their, their economies of their brewery, but also their knowledge too. So they can't be, they're not, gives them the knowledge that they're no longer uh, unknowing about these things or ignorant of them, but also the confidence too, to use them and help them use them as well. It's not just a matter of selling them a product and say, oh, there you go, off, uh, use that, it'll be fine but giving them an after-sales service with a consultancy to be able to say this is how it changes because brewing does change. It's a natural process using natural materials and seasons malt changes. So you need to be continually optimizing and finding your way through yeah. the, the, the world of, of beer production. And uh, that's what we do. Uh, you know, we do very much of that as well. Yeah. And part of the, another topic to touch on, we're going to do a, a, a separate video on this, but um, a process aid in the sense of you, you used to do a lot of enzymes now and <coughs> enzymes in a positive way, yeah. not um, as people would say, you know, um, chemical engineering. Chemical brewing, yeah, chemical it's, engineering, it's, that's yeah. right. Yeah, enzymes, I mean, um, it, I, I can remember when I started brewing, my head brewer wouldn't touch them with a barge pole. He said, that's all artificial and all the rest of it. And I always sort of went along with that because that was what that was the current thinking of the time. But the more you get into it and you look at brewing and you study it, you realize that the whole process of brewing really from the point of uh, the, the barley being malted, it's an enzymatic process. Without enzymes, none of these biological processes can happen. The, 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 it happens in the malt, it happens in the mash, um, it's happening in the yeast, the yeast uses enzymes. To, you would not get beer of any description at all if it wasn't for enzymatic action. Um, so developing that science into the use of extraneous enzymes to help the process, particularly when you have got challenging conditions where the malt quality drops or you're wanting to use alternative materials in your raw material to malt. You perhaps want to use, I know brewers who are using raw barley, brewers who are using maize or brewers who are using um, rye. In their in their beers to create certain flavors and this is not new this is goes back many centuries when barley malt was not always available and they had to use other cereal adjuncts so the use of extraneous enzymes to help the brewer unlock the potential and the best part of the process is is very very important and it's not to be considered artificial it's not to be to be frightened of it's not to be considered um, inorganic. It's just the application of science yeah. and the knowledge, once you've got it, to use it to create these final um, uh, good beers and, and get the very best out of them. So, look, moving on, cleaning is a big thing for Murphy's as well. Yes. Um, you know, a lot of cleaning um, 
chemicals, I suppose that's you could right. call them. So that's right. um, you're covering everything there for needed in the brew house. That's right. The Murphy business model is very much one of the one stop shop uh, because it, to, historically we were rather focused on just in, in the cask industry. We were just focused on liquor treatments and a few finings agents. And that was about it. Yeah. But as uh, the brewing industry has changed with the dynamics of the marketplace, we've noticed or required ourselves to become more diversified. And with the growth of the smaller brewer, it's, uh, we've noticed that they like the ability to, a bit like a supermarket, you go in there and you get everything in one trolley. Yeah. Then you can focus on your brewing, your distribution and your selling. Yeah. And, that's, and then you can have one point of contact. You deal with us and we're master brewers who come along afterwards and help you yeah. to optimize all those products. So very much so, it's part of the uh, d diversification. So chemicals for cleaning are now part of our po portfolio. And so we stock all the, the caustics, the acids, the disinfection agents that brewers need to maintain the correct standards of hygiene. Very similar to what Kettle Brew do, the one-stop shop. So there you that's go. There you probably go. why we're a good fit it's for a good one fit. another. Yeah. So look, that's a, a brief introduction to what we're going to do. We're going to do a series of videos with Nick and they're going to be released over the next while um, covering some really good, interesting topics with some professional technical advice. I'm going to pop a link below to the Murphy & Sons website so that you can check that out if you're watching this from outside of Ireland. And um, thanks so much for watching. Consider giving us a subscribe and get, hit the little bell so you're notified whenever our next video pops up. Until next time, happy brewing.